Hi, I'm Brian Myers. I'm a professor of surgery at Washington University and I'm the chief of thoracic surgery at Barnes Jewish Hospital. Together, uh, Washington University and Barnes uh, come together to form Siteman Cancer Center and that's, uh, that's the home for the oncology work that we do here at Washington University. Uh, I'm a thoracic surgeon with an expertise in lung cancer and one of the most common uh, problems that I uh, end up uh, counseling patients about is the issue of the discovery of a lung nodule on a screening CAT scan. Now, it turns out that screening CAT scans have become very popular. Uh, it's because they're very effective in identifying lung cancer early, but the problem is the majority of lung nodules that get detected by a screening uh, CAT scan are not cancer. And so there's a lot of discussion, a lot of deliberation about what the best step is once a new nodule has been detected. And so this conversation or this discussion that I have is one that I do very often with patients who are at that dilemma. They have a new nodule. So when I, when I have them in my office, I usually write stuff down and, I, and I'll write down a short list of four things. The four things that could be done to help uh, alleviate the dilemma of a new nodule on a screening CAT scan. Number one, you could remove it. Number two, you could do a needle biopsy. Number three, you could do a PET scan. And number four, you can offer surveillance, just get more CAT scans in the future. And so, so uh, once you kind of set the goals or the guidelines there, then I would go back and, and then you know, go into some more detail with you about, uh, about how that each option uh, applies to you. So number one, uh, removal. Uh, uh, removal is surgery. Uh, so if we're gonna do uh, option number one and remove the nodule, that involves doing thoracic surgery. So uh, typically the, the, for a small lung nodule, we would do a minimally invasive approach. We would do a video assisted you know, thoracoscopic removal that doesn't involve a big incision, uh, or we might do a robotic assisted uh, where we use the precision of the robot. But, but in general, uh, a screen detected lung nodule can be removed very safely and very effectively using uh, a minimally invasive surgical approach. Uh, uh, the value of that is that once it's out, uh, then the pathologists have the ability to uh, uh, look at it completely uh, and uh, eliminates all guesswork and you've already been treated for it by the time you find out what it is. So I think there is some value in that in the setting where we think that there's a high likelihood of cancer. So we base that uh, designation of high likelihood uh, based on the appearance of the nodule on the CAT scan, uh, the presence of any other lung diseases like emphysema in the lung, uh, the history of smoking, the age of the patient, and a lot of other factors like that. So, so we, we try to be very judicious and thoughtful about who to apply surgery to, but once we do that, we can do it safely and effectively, and, and the vast majority of patients that are selected for that option uh, prove to have cancer and are treated in that option. The next step down in terms of invasiveness uh, uh, for uh, assessing a pulmonary nodule would be a needle biopsy. Now a needle biopsy is certainly uh, a lot easier on a patient than a surgery, uh, but it's not easy. Uh, and so we are very careful and thoughtful about applying that option. There are some risks associated with it, and certainly there's some discomfort associated with it. But there are some circumstances where a needle biopsy is very helpful. Uh, if we have a patient, for instance, who has a very suspicious lesion, a very suspicious nodule, but that patient does not want surgery, or the patient has some medical problems that would make surgery risky, uh, then many instances we will offer a needle biopsy, prove that it's a cancer, and then offer them stereotactic radiation therapy, which is a highly effective uh, radiation strategy uh, that uh, has really uh, revolutionized radiation therapy for lung cancer. So, so uh, you know, that just the fact that somebody's getting a needle biopsy doesn't mean that they will or will not have surgery, uh, but it's a way of clarifying the diagnosis and allowing additional treatments to take place with a strong knowledge of what's going on. There might be other instances where we are suspicious of an infection and we want to prove the infection uh, but rather than remove it uh, and allow a non-surgical treatment to take place. But in general, uh, we're pretty sparing with needle biopsy uh, uh, with the exception of the case that I described. The third option would be a PET scan. Now PET scans are remarkable tools in radiology and nuclear medicine, uh, but they have limitations in certain, cer certain circumstances. 
such as the uh, identification of uh, lung cancer versus a, a non-lung cancer nodule. Now it turns out uh, when we studied our results uh, of many patients who've had surgery for lung nodules, what we find is that the majority of them have cancer and the minority that don't have cancer often have inflammatory conditions such as granulomatous disease uh, or fungus infections. And it turns out that these granulomas or fungus infections often light up on the PET scan just as brightly as a cancer. And so what we find is that in this setting, for a stage one uh, uh, isolated lung nodule, the PET scan does not offer a lot of ability to discriminate between cancer and benign conditions. And for that reason, it's not that helpful in this circumstance. Now, if somebody has a known lung cancer and they need to get an accurate stage to see whether or not it's spread, then the PET scan is very valuable. But for the identification of a small uh, screen detected lung nodule, the PET scan has limited value. Uh, finally, the, the last option is one that we employ very commonly, and that's observation. Now, there are certain patients who have a very low risk for lung cancer just based on their uh, young age uh, or their lack of smoking history uh, or lack of emphysema. All those uh, factors would really uh, decrease our suspicion that a lung nodule is cancer. Uh, very small lung nodules also are, are less suspicious than larger ones. So there's a, a, quite a number of patients who we feel are at very low risk for lung cancer and we don't want to do, do a needle biopsy, we don't want to subject them to an operation that would uh, not be helpful to them. So for those patients we choose observation and get uh, a plan for surveillance with additional CAT scans usually in three to six months as the next step, but then gradually that uh, interval can be stretched out in order to uh, allow uh, some uh, time span to be covered without an excessive number of CAT scans. So by the time you get out two and a half, three years without any change in the nodule, uh, then you can really uh, safely declare that the nodule is benign. Sometimes we're rewarded on the first CAT scan to show that the nodule has gone away, which is a sure sign that it was an inflammatory nodule in the first place. So there's a lot of advantages to the CAT scan in the appropriately chosen nodule for the appropriately chosen patient. So, so I think that you know, really now the, the whole uh, concern that might be raised uh, by you or a loved one who's got a, a nodule detected on a screening CT scan can be boiled down to these four options and, and really uh, it's a, uh, on uh, the duty of the practitioner that you see, whether it's a surgeon or a pulmonologist or an oncologist, uh, to guide you through the four choices uh, and try to see you know, which one's uh, most appropriate for your circumstances uh, to help get you through this uh, challenge. So I hope that helps. It's a very common problem and uh, a very common discussion I have with my patients. And I hope that uh, uh, having an opportunity to hear about it today, it's been helpful for you. Thanks very much.